Good morning, y'all. How's it going? Let me set up my computer real quick. I, uh, I'm trying a couple of new things with uh, s some technology this morning uh, to test it out during this devotion and see if it's something that we could use during worship too. So bear with me if there's anything wrong, but I've tested it a few times, so hopefully nothing will go wrong. Uh, happy Earth Day, as Eunice said in the comments there. That's awesome. Uh, it is Earth Day, and it's interesting to be spending an Earth Day at home mostly, uh, and not out in the world trying to do something to take care of the Earth. But maybe there are things that we can do, uh, and ask Eunice, I'm sure she's got some ideas. Um, go in your neighborhood, pick up trash, uh, make sure you're recycling. Uh, if the parks are open, go take a walk in a park and that kind of thing. But there's a lot that you can do uh, to save the earth. Uh, maybe even donate, right? If we're at home and we're in the place where we can donate some money, maybe we can do that stuff. I didn't come to here to talk about just Earth Day. <laughs> but it is a, a good thing that we live on such a beautiful earth um, and that we should take care of it. Let's pray and then we'll, we'll hop into this. I am going to talk a little bit about creation today. Uh, I want to talk about waterfalls um, because I love, I love a good waterfall hike. So, but let's pray and then we'll, we'll go, get into it. Holy God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this earth. Thank you for uh, the places that we call home. Um, and thank you for this community. Uh, we are so fortunate to, to be able to connect in these different ways in such a strange time in our lives. Um, and we ask that you continue to, to give us ways to love each other uh, and to love your earth um, in new ways, ways that we might not have taken for granted yet. Um, and so we're learning so many new things during quarantine, and we ask that you continue to fill us up with courage and, and, and wisdom and love uh, so that we can do those things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning, like I said, I wanted to talk about waterfalls. At the beginning of what seemed like it was going to be a quarantine, Katie and I tried to hike a lot um, before all the parks closed because uh, it got us outside. It got the dogs outside. Um, it was a good way to, to stay active. Um, and it was also okay. You can stay away from people when you're on a hike. But we love to hike uh, around waterfalls. Here's a picture of a waterfall. Oh, let me get over here. Uh, here's a picture of a waterfall. This one's actually pretty local. I think it's in Central, uh, and it's called Todd Creek Falls, I think. Uh, we went here with the students, the LCM students, um, back, I think, at the end of January. Um, so it's within driving distance from Clemson, and uh, it's a nice, easy hike, not too strenuous, but it was a beautiful little waterfall uh, in the middle of nowhere, it seems. And then there's a nice little creek that you can follow, too. But the thing about waterfall hikes is that you're so focused on the end of the hike, right? The waterfall is the peak of your experience. And so sometimes if you're hiking to a waterfall, you don't take the time to look around you at all the little things that are there too. Like on this hike to Todd Creek Falls, there's lots of little uh, wildflowers around um, that you can see and there we took the dogs with us so the dogs noticed a couple of things that we didn't notice because of their noses right um, and then after the falls even there was like I said there's this little creek that you could follow and the students had fun skipping rocks <laughs> Katie had fun finding little mud pits with the dogs um, but there's so many different things around us that we might miss on a waterfall hike because we're so focused on trying to get to that waterfall, to get to the end. Uh, and I think that can be a shame sometimes. Another waterfall hike we went on uh, was pretty packed actually during quarantine and so we sh shouldn't have gone there probably. Um, everybody else had the same idea as us. I can't remember the name of it, but it was about an hour away. Uh, and along the way, there were all it was a little bit at the beginning of spring and there were all these little plants sprouting up, all this new life. Um, and I almost missed it if Katie didn't have her eye on it, uh, because she's got a better eye than I do, then I would have missed these beautiful little signs of new life. Um, because again, I was so focused on getting to this massive, beautiful, awesome uh, peak of our hike waterfall. I think that is an image for our lives sometimes, especially right now. I'm thinking about 
um, trying to get to the end of this, right? Uh, and sometimes not paying enough attention to the people in my life or the things that are going on around me um, during the right now. <laughs> not in the tomorrow, but the right now. Uh, and that's hard. Um, it's, it's hard to not want to be at the end, to not think about the day that we're all back together. Uh, yesterday, I um, told the students that we were officially canceling our beach trip. It's just in a couple of weeks, and it, it almost sounds silly to even think that we were we were probably still going to go. But I, I wanted to hold on to the hope that we could still go on this beach trip for as long as I could. Um, and I, I kept thinking, this would be great. But you can't rush the ending, right? You can't run to the end of the waterfall. Usually waterfall hikes have some pretty <laughs> steep incline. And if you ran, you, you wouldn't even get there. Uh, so we can't, we can't run to the end of this. Um, and so it's important for us to try to figure out how to appreciate the things on the way to the end. It reminded me of this uh, video that I, I watched the other day. I love the book of Revelation. <laughs> This, we're going to read Revelation 21 in a minute. Um, and it, I don't love it because it, it's incredible, but it's poetic. It's, um, it's symbolic. There's a lot of, of fun symbols in there. Uh, it's scary for sure. I'm not going to say that it's an easy read, but I do, I do like it because there's a, this overwhelming sense of hope throughout the whole book. And sometimes we read Revelation 21. If we read anything in Revelation, we read Revelation 21, the very end of it. Because we're so focused on that hope and what might come at the end. Um, but this video that I watched from Dr. Craig Kester at Luther Seminary, one of my former professors, I never had him in class, but he was the dean when I was there, so I knew who he was. Um, Revelation 20, sorry, Katie's going to work, if you can, <laughs> if you can hear that. But uh, Revelation 21 is at the very end, and it's this beautiful image of what the new heaven and the new earth are going to look like. But Dr. Kester said we can't only skip to the end to get the hope. There are little bits of hope sprouted in between all the chaos and the disaster, the monsters of Revelation that you might have heard of, the beasts, uh, the wars. There are little pe pieces of hope peppered all through Revelation. It's not just at the end of it that it's such this beautiful theological book, but it's all throughout um, so I do want to read Revelation 21 because it, it's beautiful. Sometimes we read this during funerals because it, it gives us this image of what heaven might be like. Uh, it, it creates this idea that God is never far from us. But these are beautiful words to, to take with us every day. Revelation 21, 1 through 4. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Again, you might have heard that, uh, that passage before. You will wipe away every tear. The part that I love about that is that this, this new heaven, this new earth, these things are coming from God to us. God is coming from on high, wherever God sits. <laughs> coming down to be with human beings. That is such a, a wonderful and refreshing image to think about God constantly coming to us. There's nothing we have to do. There's no ladder tall enough for us to try to get to God. There's no mountain with a waterfall high enough that gets us closer to God because God is constantly coming to us, into our lives, not just at the end of all things, but right here in the midst of it, too. Um, it's harder to see God in the midst of it, in the chaos, uh, 
than it is at the end. It's harder to see the beauty of the hike in the middle of it before you get to the, the amazing waterfall that you've seen pictures of before you go on the hike. But it's there. God is here right now and God will be there all the way until the end and even afterwards. Um, that's just a little thought that I had about waterfalls, about Revelation and about God. Thank you for, for pondering that with me. And I, I hope that you feel the same way, that you, you find ways to, to notice God in these days now. And it seems like we're, we're still not rushing towards the end. Some things are open now, but we're taking small steps towards the end of this pandemic. And I, I think it's important to recognize God right here, right now. Um, and if you stumble across some amazing revelation of where God is, share it with other people. Because like I said, it's not always easy to see God in these times. Let's pray and then let's go about our days looking for God, looking for ways to care for this creation on this earth day um, and just to, to support each other along the way. But let us pray. Holy God, again, thank you for this day. Uh, fill us up with so much courage, so much faith, so much of your love that we can't help but notice you right now. Uh, don't take our eyes off of the hope for tomorrow. But give us something to hope for in these moments as well. We ask that you continue to, to give us signs of beauty like waterfalls and birds singing and spring sprouting. Um, and that we cherish those things and don't take them for granted. Uh, if there's one thing that these days have taught us is that you, we can find new ways to have faith and to love you and to love our neighbors. Um, so, so continue to fill us up with those learning opportunities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, any feedback on, on what the technology did there, let me know. I think I saw a little bit of buffering in the middle. But hopefully y'all are going to have a great day, and we'll, um, we'll at least see you on Sunday. And I'll... Uh, I'll let Pastor John take the rest of the week here, so you'll see him on here um, tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday. But God bless. Love y'all. Miss y'all. And uh, have a great day. Bye.